is sitting here, Joey, with a chance to really cap off one of their finest, the finest season in Baylor football. Well, not only is Baylor in a position to win this Big 12 Conference Championship, but did you ever think that Texas, at the beginning of the season, after their one and two start, would also be in that position as well? Speaks volumes about the job that Mac Brown and his staff has done, and speaks volumes about the type of character and the type of players that are on both of these sidelines. Oh, this crowd just got the news. And look at the emotion on this field. It's the final game, and Joey fitting for a stadium 64 years old to say farewell as they move on to the new stadium next season. Well, you know what? There aren't too many places like this left around the country. I mean, everybody's building a brand new facility, a brand new stadium with luxury boxes and sky suites. There's something really nice, something refreshing to come to, come to a place like this where it's just you can feel it. You can feel the history. You can feel the, the energy in this type of place. It's, it's a wonderful environment, and I'm happy to be here to send it out. Well, the emotions are high. Baylor won the toss. They chose to defer, so Texas will have the football to start this game. Texas 8-3. Baylor with 10 wins under their belt. Weather could play a factor. Very cold ice storm blew through Texas yesterday. Very cloudy, very windy as the wind is moving from left to right. Baylor will kick off wearing retro jerseys that they date back to 1950. Kicks away, short. Duke Thomas with the return and a good one to the 32-yard line. We bring out Case McCoy, the senior, out of Graham, Texas. You know what, Greg? If there's anybody who's qualified to handle this situation, it's Case. I mean, this guy has been through so many different situations in his career. He's been a starter, a backup. But you know what? The one thing that's always been consistent, he's smart, he's gutty, and this guy is a competitor. 15th career start, none bigger than today here in Waco. Longhorns, first and 10, 31-yard line. The handoff goes to Malcolm Brown. Bangs his way, big yards, up to the 38-yard line. And Joey, let's check out our impact players. Well, there's one of your impact players right there, Malcolm Brown with the big carry. Expect to see Joe Bergeron in the backfield as well. Texas is going to run the ball early and often, and Baylor needs Eddie Lackey and Bryce Hager to come in and make some big tackles. Going back there, excuse me, excuse me, Craig. Eddie Lackey and Bryce Hager, both fantastic linebackers for Baylor, very fast sideline to sideline, and they're going to be chasing these Texas running backs all over the field today. No flag as McCoy was outside the tackle box, third down, and three, flag again down. All start, offense, number seven. That's Marcus Johnson. Enjoy the crowd. The noise level here will be a factor throughout the day. You know, I mentioned in the open, it's not just about managing the, the emotions of, of everything surrounding the game. It's about mo managing the, the excitement actually in the stadium right now. It is loud right here, Craig. Third down, eight, three wide receivers set near side. As McCoy in the shotgun, has protection, throws a deep ball, man coverage up top. The ball hangs, there's contact, and the ball will be incomplete back inside the 35-yard line. Hey, Craig, you saw that ball wobble coming out of Case McCoy's hand today. With the temperatures below 30 degrees, this ball gets hard, it gets slick, and it's tough for a quarterback to get a good grip on it, let alone for a wide receiver to make that soft hands catch. That brings down Anthony Farah to punt for Texas, and he will be punting into a stiff wind. Levi Norwood back at the 25-yard line. Farah, good kick. We can see the wind just knocks it straight down at the 36, and a flag along the far side of the field. Scott Novak, our referee today, after the punt of 30 yards. 
during the kick, holding, receiving team number seven. Ten yard penalty. First down. Let's go down and for the first time today, check in with Ryan. Craig and Joey, we know the temperatures down here are freezing, but one of the other weather conditions is the wind. We saw Case McCoy's pass get hung up in the wind. He had an open receiver, but when the offenses are moving in this in that direction, they're going to have to be very careful throwing the ball up and up in the air because it can get hung up, and all of a sudden that can lead to an interception. He was lucky right there that that didn't happen. He just saw that punt get pushed back by Farah. And the penalty pushes Baylor back to the 27-yard line. And our first look today at Bryce Petty. What a year. He'll be back for his senior campaign. 3,500 yards, Joey. 28 touchdowns through the air. He's ran for another 11. Midlothian, Texas, the 6'3 junior. Antoine Goodley hits the edge and is bumped out at the 32-yard line. A pickup of five. Hey, Craig, take a look at this formation here. Last week against TCU, they started in a, a little bit of a weird formation, a bunch diamond quad set. This time they sacked three guys up there just trying to get some quick hitters and get some rhythm going because that's what this offense is about. Rhythm, timing, getting flow. They've been knocked out of that rhythm the last two weeks against TCU and Oklahoma State. It's imperative they start fast and get going today. Well, they're off to a fast start. Niver, the tight end with the catch. Petty goes back to work quickly on a quick hit near side. Goodley breaks it to the 35-yard line. This is what we've seen throughout the season for Baylor. They'll line up and hit you and hit you fast as we look at impact players on this side of the ball. Well, yeah, Antoine Goodley's already seen the ball twice today. Only one catch last week for 12 yards, and Lake Seastrunk, both keys to getting this Baylor offense moving. Play action, quick flip, far side. Stumbling down is Clay Fuller. He was trying to hit the edge, and he hit the deck at the 33. They'll bring up second down and long. Hey, hey Craig, Texas is going to have a hard time stopping this tempo of Baylor, but two guys who can really help. Quandre Diggs is going to be all over Antoine, uh, Antoine Goodley today, and then inside. On a play action, Petty again throws and trying to come back for the football. It's incomplete. It was Corey Coleman, a redshirt freshman out of Richardson, Texas. One thing about Petty, Joey, and you're the old gunslinger from Oregon, he doesn't mind who you are, what number you wear. He throws the football around. Well, this offense is dictated by defensive numbers, and it doesn't matter who's out there, his job is to throw it to him. Third down and long on play action. Petty stands in the pocket, rifles it far side. It's going to be now a late flag. One official was throwing his arms incomplete. The backside judge threw the flag in. Corey Coleman, the intended receiver, and he was tied up with Carrington Bindham. Defense number 23. Ball replaces spot of the foul. So the senior gets a flag thrown on him. Well, I think it's the right call. Both both defender and receiver fell down. Coleman trying to work back inside, and Carrington Bindham just got his hands on him, didn't let him get in there. Fresh downs for Baylor at the 26 and a half yard line. Quick hit, Glasgow Martin cuts back up middle of the field. And he's surrounded by a host of Longhorns at the 20-yard line. Beck will mark him down inside the 20 at the 19. Craig, last week against TCU, we saw Glasgow Martin really run strong in between the tackles and burn the clock at the end of the game. They're going to need that type of physical presence inside from him today. This time, Petty on a keeper, stiff arms, and is bumped out hard inside the 15 at the 13-yard line. And those hits came from Jenkins, the Sam strong side linebacker, and Bindham. Need that type of physical presence inside from him today. This time, Petty on a keeper, stiff arms, and is bumped out hard inside the 15. Inside the 10 goes Glasgow Martin. Last week, 17 carries, 69 yards. Against TCU, Lake Seastrunk was back as well. He's been battling groin injuries, and this is just an incredible drive. Hurry up, hurry up, as Martin hits the middle of that pile against Cedric Reed and Jackson Jeffcoat. Inside the five. Yes, 
Fourth Greg, down. We've seen Bryce Petty run the ball more over the last few weeks because when you run this spread option offense, you have to have the option of the quarterback. Teams can just key in on the running back if your quarterback isn't a threat. Bryce Petty has 11 touchdowns running the ball this year, but they're going to need him to run more out in the middle of the field if they're going to keep defense is honest. Well, you need points in a game such as this, and you've got the wind behind them. So it's the Aaron Jones who's hit 11 of 17 this season. And the field goal is up and good. From 22 yards with Alabama and Auburn, you just expect it at the end of the season. It's what makes college football great, and it adds so much more importance to this game here today. Well, this place is rocking Floyd KC Stadium, 64th year. The kick, two yards deep. Texas brings it out. Duke Thomas, nice cut back, 25 on his feet, 30, 35, and takes a fall forward to the 37-yard line. 37-yard return. Joey, time to look at today's Buick keys to victory. Well, the last couple weeks, teams have been able to shut down Antoine Goodley. That's what Texas needs to do to throw this Baylor offense out of rhythm. With the absence of Tevin Reese, Goodley is the key to get everything going. On the other side of the ball, Baylor needs to stay in rhythm. When their offense is going, their defense can play aggressive because offensively, if they give their defensive lead, this aggressive style Baylor defense can come up with turnovers. Texas with their second offensive series at the 37-yard line. McCoy on the handoff to Malcolm Brown. Cuts back, big hole, slices. 50 to the 45 yard line orion stewart the safety came up to make the tackle and a nice block up front by the tight end jeff swaim a pickup of 16. you know craig we saw this a couple weeks ago in stillwater when baylor played there oklahoma state was able to run the ball consistently and manage the clock baylor needs to have a lead so that defense can pin their ears back and try and play aggressively right up the middle two yards as Brown bangs his way to the 43-yard line. I'll tell you, one of the great stories in college football, at least in the Big 12, is the ground game of Texas. They were heartbroken with Jonathan Gray, the tailback tore his Achilles. We were there at West Virginia back on November 9th. Malcolm Brown's been beat up. Bergeron had fumble, fumbleitis, I guess is the best way to put it, early in the season. Now he's had to step in for the inter injured Jonathan Gray. Well, Joe Bergeron wore Jonathan Gray's jersey last week. What a tribute to him. Little pitch out. Dejay Johnson hits the edge, bounced down of bounds, 25-yard line. Johnson did not play last week because of violation of team rules. He's an electric runner, receiver, 22 catches on the year, and he just went for 14. Well, he's that type of player that you just have to get the ball in his hands. He was a running back a couple years ago, and Texas is just trying to find a place for him because he's so explosive. Joe Bergeron, the handoff. They are deep in the backfield. And Bergeron works his way down close to the 25-yard line. Bergeron last week against Tech, 17 carries. Joey, 102 yards and a touchdown. Well, Bergeron, like you mentioned a moment ago, had a little bit of fumbleitis. Big fumble against Oklahoma, another big one against Iowa State midseason. And so he's found himself at the bottom of this stable of running backs. But the injury to Jonathan Gray has allowed him to get back on the field. And what a testament to Joe Bergeron and his drive to keep playing that he has now come in and carried the ball for 100 yards last week. He'll get the call again. Tries to spin out of a tackle, and Baylor is there to push him back for a loss. It's Eddie Lackey. The Will, weak side linebacker, 85th tackle of the season. Downstairs we go, and Ryan. Craig and Joey, I was on the sidelines, on Baylor's sidelines, and Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator for Baylor, was telling his defense when they, when they went on the sideline, we got to find a way to stop the run. We've got to use our hands, get off blocks. We've seen Texas on this drive give them a steady dose of runs. They just came up with a big play for their defense. Baylor's got to keep that up. It was a loss of one, Ryan. Brown and Bergeron split alongside McCoy. McCoy, middle of the field's open, and he throws. It's incomplete. Mike Davis, the intended receiver. There was a soft spot open for a moment, Joey, right in the middle of the field around the 25-yard line. Well, that, that was the right, the right read, the right throw. Great job of protection by the Texas offensive line. Case just misses him by a, just by an inch. Great read. Nice timing on the delivery. Just missed a little bit on the throw. 
Anthony Farah, 19 of 20. His only miss from 45 yards against Kansas State back on week four. This will be from 44 yards on the far hash. Good snap, good hold, kick short. That ball was deflected. And Joey, on a cold day, it's like hitting a sack of concrete. <laughs> that concrete felt pretty good, though, I'll tell you that. For the basketball team that beat Kentucky last night, here he is jumping up to block the field goal. Just getting his paws in there. What a player. Great defensive end. Really learning how to play the game of football. Transferred from Penn State. Coaches told us that even if he messes up on a play, he can still get in there and create a five-yard loss. Well, he's got a bright future. As you mentioned, transfer from Penn State. He has 12 of his 29 tackles this season for losses. He just tipped that field goal attempt. 3-0. Baylor back to work. Petty. Quick throw near side on the hands of Goodley. And he's bumped down at the 40-yard line. So Petty has now hit five of his first six for 53 yards. Uh, and that is so key for Baylor because this offense dictates how the defense plays. This offense controls everything for this Baylor football team. Blake Seastrunk gets his first carry, pushes the pile to the 45. You know, co or Craig, a couple weeks ago, against Oklahoma State. They got in the face of Antoine Gridley and they jammed him up. Last week against TCU, Jason Barrett did the same thing, tried to take him away. And without Tevin Reese in the ball game, to balance things out, Antoine Goodley's the only real explosive wide receiver that Baylor has left. They're gonna rely on him to get this tempo going and Bryce Petty has already gone to him multiple times today. Coleman comes back on a quick hot slant. Hurry up offense, Baylor third down and short. Flax will stop play as the ball was handed to Seastrunk. Prior to the ball being snapped, false start. Offense, number 18, five-yard penalty, third down. Yeah, the tight end made a jump. That's Ni Niver, Jordan Niver. Let's go downstairs, Ryan. Craig, Joey, I'm holding one of these footballs down here on the field, and in these cold temperatures, this is a brick. This becomes extremely difficult to throw for a quarterback and extremely difficult to kick if you're a kicker because all of a sudden now you have a very hard football. Joe, you can relate to that playing in those cold temperatures in Oregon. You know, Ryan, it also gets, apparently it gets pretty cold to talk down there because I see you're getting cold. But yeah, Oregon, Detroit, you know, heck, anytime you get in those cold games, I play, remember playing in Lambeau at the end of, uh, end of December. I mean, you do anything you can just to keep some sort of grip on that football. And, and the wide receivers, especially when it comes humming at them, like, like you said, Ryan, it's like catching a brick. Spencer Roth, who averages over 46 yards a punt, is back inside his own 30 with a win behind his back. It's a fake and a pass. Incomplete. No flags. Art Bryles try a little trickery. That's a bold move in a game with just 7-10 left in the opening quarter. Chevy year in events, great time to buy an all-new Silverado. Down a minute ago, here's what they called it. Nobody in the middle of the field relying on Fuller to win across the face of Duke Thomas. And it's just good coverage. Good coverage. Not a great throw when Bryce Petty isn't throwing the football. You can't expect a perfect ball, and that was just a good play by Texas being heads up on that fake. Yeah, interesting call by Art Bryles in this big game for Baylor. Now they give Texas the football at the Bear 43-yard line. They fake the reverse. Up the middle goes Malcolm Brown. What a strong runner. Goes 6 feet, 225 pounds. He's got that bulldozer approach, but also great speed. Brown now with four carries, 33 yards in this opening quarter. Just under seven minutes left as McCoy on second down. Brown again, the ball carrier, stacked up, no gain. Count those gold hats, one, two, three, four, five, Bears right on top of him. Well, that's what it's gonna take for Baylor. There's, there's, no, there's no surprise at what Texas is gonna do. They told us this mid-week mid that they're gonna try and run the ball 40 to 45 times this ball game establish the line of scrimmage, force that defensive line for Baylor to do something that they're not comfortable with. And they have the horses, Texas does, and Joe Bergeron and Malcolm Brown to carry out that game plan. Malcolm Brown alongside McCoy. 
play clock under 10. McCoy, three-step three drop, throws up top, and the ball batted down, incomplete, Dimitri Goodson. Mike Davis, the intended receiver, and Joe, you got to give some uh, some props to Baylor. This is quite a turnaround from a year ago. Baylor very opportunistic on defense. They force a lot of plays. The sixth time in Baylor history last week, two picks for well, touchdowns. Yeah, the, the defense for Baylor is very aggressive right there. They force Case McCoy to throw off of his back foot. Consequently, the ball comes up a little bit short. That pressure for Baylor is what creates the turnovers. That's what they feed on. They feed on offensive rhythm, allowing their defense to be aggressive and trying to create sacks and turnovers. And now Mac Brown wants it on fourth down and four. McCoy in the pocket. He can run. Instead, throws, and that ball is short to Kendall Sanders. I thought McCoy was going to tuck and run, run it. He had room to roam and decided to pull a, well, pull you, a string short. You know what? I, I thought he had room to run as well, but you saw at the last minute one of the Baylor linebackers step in. Watch here, you're going to see it coming from the right of your screen as Case McCoy steps up into the pocket. Has what looks like an, a lane to run, but sees his wide receiver flash right in front of him. Texas gives up the football on downs, and Baylor and Bryce Petty goes back to work with a 3-0 lead off that 22-yard field goal by Aaron Jones. Both teams having the ball four and a half minutes. 5.52 left here in the opening quarter. On the ground goes Baylor. Seastrunk. A pickup of four up to the 41-yard line. Baylor on a hurry up again. Quick throw. Oh, what a catch. Coming back for it was Goodley. He's got it at the 49. Hey, Craig, let's go back a couple plays ago to that fourth down play. Right here, you're going to see Eddie Lackey in the middle of the field. It looks like Case McCoy has the room to run, but he feels Eddie Lackey coming up. That's a tough guy to beat in the open field. I don't fault that decision by Case McCoy going to his wide eye. Under further review, ruling on the field was a completed catch. So upstairs it goes to the replay official, Jim Blackwood. And let's take a look ourselves. This was a tough catch on the fingertips. Looks like a Looks catch. Like a catch from that angle. As Goodley, not once but twice, was trying to grab the end of that football. And Joey, as you know, as Ryan just mentioned, it is tough to catch a football in this kind of weather. Absolutely. Those balls that... Rolling on the field is confirmed. Catch. And, and that's the right call, but I was going to say, those, those balls that are a little bit off when the weather's warm, wide receivers have a much easier time catching because they've got the tack, they've got that soft leather that they can grab. Today, like Ryan said, it's going to be a brick, and that was a great catch by Goodley there on a ball that was thrown a little bit behind him. Uh, you saw Goodley's numbers. He's good for over five receptions a game, 109 yards. They stack two wide receivers high and low on first and 10 Baylor. Right at midfield, Petty in the pocket, up top he goes. Big catch, jumping up high. The reception is made, Clay Fuller. He's 6'1", play like he was 6'5", and a 24-yard pickup. Well, Craig, last couple weeks, Oklahoma State and TCU have both gotten up on the line of scrimmage and pressed the Baylor wide receivers. That's jammed them, it's forced them out of their rhythm, forced them off their route. When they're running this stack formation, Baylor, it forces the defense to sit back and they can't get up and press. There was a flag far side of the field. Whistles just about the time Petty threw that ball. And we'll get the call from Scott Novak. False start on the offense, number four. Five yard penalty, first down. Hey Craig, here's exactly what I'm talking about. The space here. That's created by Fuller, allows the DB to have to play off of Goodley. You see him there, they didn't throw him the ball, but he had space. He hasn't had space in the last two weeks, and it looks like Art Bryles has done a great job of devising a way to get space for Antoine Goodley, because like we mentioned earlier, with the Tevin Reese injury, Goodley is the key to getting this offense rolling. Goodley lines up near side, three wide receivers up top. And again, movement, jump, and flags. Ball start, offense. Number 75, five-yard penalty, first step. Troy Baker, the right tackle. I'm surprised. They've been running this hurry-up 
Joey, all season long. I think I would think this O line is very much in sync with Petty. Well, yeah, you saw it last week at TCU. There, multiple false starts, and you think that maybe it's just from being on the road. But Baylor over the last couple weeks has looked a little bit out of sync, almost as if they're trying to go too fast, trying to anticipate. They just need to settle and focus in on what they need to do. Four flags for 25 yards here in the quarter for Baylor. On the ground on a stop and go. Seastrom hit hard down at the 32-yard line. Let's get a word from Ryan Neese. Joe, you made a great point in the open about controlling your emotions. All Second of a sudden, down. we've seen Baylor uncharacteristically getting false starts. This, these are the things that they have to control, the little things. These small details can come back to bite them later in the game. All right now, second down and 17. Petty, for the first time, is hurried out of the pocket, and he smartly throws it away and was outside the tackle box. That brings up third and long. Coming with pressure, who else? But Cedric Reed, two good defensive ends for Texas. Well, you know, off a little bit on the snap there. Baylor getting a little bit out of sorts. They had Bryce Petty had Antoine Goodley running up the sideline. I know that he was looking for him out there, but he was knocked out of rhythm because of the snap. Little things make a big difference. And when you're playing for a Big 12 championship, you have to be on point. Third down long. Petty on play action. Up top, throws a bad ball. That nearly picked inside the 10. Quandre Diggs had that ball. I think he was surprised it was so right on his hands, and he dropped it. Well, what happened is the wide receiver stopped his route. Bryce Petty is thinking the wideout's going to go up the sideline. Instead, he stops and really leaves his quarterback hanging there. What a quarterback and a wide receiver will do in this type of offense is read the coverage. That time, the wide receiver saw the DB back, so he stopped. Bryce Petty thought that he could run by him, so he threw the ball up the field. Just a miscommunication by the quarterback and wide receiver. Aaron Jones will set for a 49-yard field goal attempt. He's hit from 22 with a win behind his back. No. So Baylor misses from 49, still up by three. Big 12 title on the line here in Waco. Fire their D coordinator, Manny Diaz, hired Greg Robinson. 7-1 in Big 12 play. That lone loss, Oklahoma State, week 12, 38-13. Okay, who, who would have thought that after a 1-2 and two start and giving up over 500 yards rushing to BYU in week two that this Texas team would be in this position? Hand off to Brown off the right side. Well, it all centers around their defensive coordinator and what a job he has done. Came in, Greg Robinson took over week three after Manny Diaz was fired after that debacle against Brigham Young and what a job he really has done. Well, he's done a great job, but you got to give a lot of credit to the players as well. I mean, just what, what wonderful young men to stick with this, to, to stick with all the trouble that, that happened at the beginning of the season, injuries late in the season. I mean, there are so many storylines that you can talk about between Case McCoy and Malcolm Brown and Joe Bergeron coming back. Just a great class group of players and coaches here at Texas. Brown takes that little floater out to the 45-yard line. Let's get a thought from Ryan. Joey, you, you and I have covered this team a lot, and we have a lot of respect for the Texas team because of the players and their fight, their ability to overcome adversity. They continue to show that each and every week, and I tell you, for them to come back from where they started at the beginning of the season, to be here playing for a championship, very impressive. Couldn't agree more, especially with the uncertainty of the future of head coach Mac Brown. That story continues to make headlines. Big hole up the gut. Terrell Burt to the 32-yard line, tackled down. Burt got the hold of Malcolm Brown on a big gainer. Well, look at the hole here, created by the offensive line for Texas. Heck, I could run through that thing, it was so big. This time the hole closes. And Bergeron bounces back. He'll lose two to the 35-yard line. You know, though, going back a moment and talking about the character of these players. It looks like we've got an injury down there on the field. Joe Bergeron seems to be down. Well, he's one of the character guys. Well, absolutely. I was going to say there's so many great, great leaders on this team guys that have been playing since their freshman and sophomore year. I mean, you look at that offensive line that just opened up a huge hole. Mason Walters, Dominic Espinosa, Trey Hopkins. They've all started more than 35 games. 
Mason Walters started 49 straight. I mean, these guys have been through every situation possible and have handled it with class. We saw Bergeron holding that ankle. We mentioned Jonathan Gray's injury against West Virginia. They do have a redshirt freshman who's had a couple of carries on the year. In fact, 18, Jalen Overstreet. And Bergeron's up. Joey hurts even more, as you know, on a cold day. Well, God, I mean, it's, it's the story of the season for Texas. It really is. Every time it seems like they've got something going, there's been an injury. But they're lucky that they have this type of depth at running back. When Jonathan Gray went down, Malcolm Brown really shouldered the majority of that load, carrying the ball 25, more than 25 times each of the last three games. Oh, and there it is. Joe Bergeron's ankle just getting wrapped up underneath there, falling on it awkwardly. Second down, 13. At the 35 of Baylor. Handoff. Dejay Johnson, how about Lackey? Shooting through, making the tackle on Johnson. Well, they're going to need Baylor as these linebackers, Eddie Lackey and Bryce Hager. They run extremely well. They both cover sideline to sideline, but they are going to have to make big tackles against the Texas running game because it's no surprise. We talked about it already. They told us, the Texas coaches, early, early in the week, they're going to run the football. On a cold day especially, they're going to run this football, and you're going to get a heavy dose of Malcolm Brown and now maybe Dajay Johnson, but Eddie Lackey, and Bryce Hager are going to have to make big plays for this Baylor defense. Brown back in the backfield alongside McCoy on third down 15. That ball hangs up. Picked inside the 15-yard line. K.J. Morton. Uh, give some love to Terrence Lloyd who got in that Texas backfield. That ball floated and that is the second interception of the season for Morton. Well, you know what? And we talked, I talked about it a minute ago, the aggressiveness of the Baylor defense. That time they brought an all-out blitz, had one more guy coming than Texas could block. Forced Case McCoy to, ball, to throw the ball hot, and it was simply a miscommunication between Mike Davis and Case McCoy. We saw it a moment ago with, with Baylor and the wide receiver seeing the DB over the top and stopping his route. The same thing happened there with Texas. Mike Davis running up the sideline. Case thought he was going to keep going. He threw a ball that was going to give him a chance to go up and make a play. Instead, Mike broke his route off, thought Case was going to get it to him quick. Just a miscommunication and a turnover created by that Baylor pressure. And Petty's got the ball and tries to lead Antoine Goodley. Joy, let's go back a play and look at this ball because, again, you got to remember, as a quarterback, you're thrown into a stiff win. That ball just hangs. Well, yeah. Case McCoy had to make a decision. He had to make a decision quickly because he had pressure coming in his face, and you saw Mike Davis there just kind of stop on his route. Petty's missed his last three throws. On the ground goes Baylor. Glasgow Martin carries to the 15. Jackson Jeffcoat. With the tackle, Jeff Coat, what a player. Three-year letterman, Plano, Texas. Yeah, if the name sounds familiar, it's because his dad, Jim, Jeff Coat, a fine, fine defensive lineman for the Dallas Cowboys. Well, I think Jackson's become a, become a fine, oh. fine player in yes. his own right. 56 career tackles for loss. I mean, just in every offensive backfield, it seems like, in the Big 12. Three sacks last week against Texas Tech. Petty, all day to throw, and... They're going to call that incomplete down at the 30-yard line. Adrian Phillips, for a moment, looked like maybe he had uh, taken that ball just off the top of the grass, the turf. It's incomplete. Well, it comes back to the play of Duke Johnson there, jamming Antoine Goodley off the line, getting in his face, disrupting his route. Antoine Goodley is a big physical wide receiver, but he does not very often, or has not often in the season, had to deal with that press coverage because of the the threat on the other side from Tevin Reese. When he got injured against Oklahoma, the pressure on Goodley he really heated up, and teams have been able to slow him down. Spencer Roth right at his goal line. Tough kick, end over end. Takes a Baylor bounce. Inside the 30, inside the 25. Rolling to the 22-yard line.
We played 15 minutes, 3 nothing. Baylor on Fox. Joe Bergeron running around on the sidelines. His ankle is getting evaluated. They respatted his cleat, which is just taping over the cleat and taping over the ankle to give it a little bit more support. It looks like he's going to be able to come back into the game. Now, yeah, from our perch, looks like good explosive ability still, Joey, as he was stretching <laughs> out pretty good there on the run. First down. McCoy and Texas. They go back to work McCoy so far Joey 2 of 7 24 yards and an interception second quarter underway Brown could not elude Brody Trahan number 15 but still picks up four maybe five second down that's what you call Reese Patton make those shoes look nice <laughs> Sometimes running backs do it for the look. Sometimes they do it because they need it. And right now, I know Joe Bergeron wants to get back in that ball game. Brown behind McCoy. Play action. McCoy wants the deep ball. Has a man up top. Mike Davis and just overthrows him. Stride for stride was Lackey and Goodson. But a good ball by McCoy. And the first time Texas had, has had the ball with the wind behind their back. Well, yeah, and they really took a shot. Mike Davis has been their deep play guy. And that's what Texas likes to do is run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, then take a shot over the top with Mike Davis. Mike has been a fantastic receiver for Texas through his career. Fourth in career receptions, fifth in career touchdowns, has eight touchdowns already on this season. And McCoy a little shaken here, missing four of his last five throws. Three wide receivers near side. Just two first downs so far in this game. Mike Davis, the intended receiver. K.J. Morton was there. Well, Craig, watch this. Again, the brick coming at him. Case McCoy throws a perfect pass. Great ball on the outside shoulder away from the defender. Mike Davis has to make that catch. Anthony Farah. Beautiful punt. Farah catch at the 32 by Levi Norwood. So Baylor or Texas, whoever comes out on top today, Big 12 champs. Well, yeah, it is so difficult to finish a season undefeated. People don't realize the amount of pressure that builds up. The more you win, the more pressure builds. And, you know, so often you see a team lose late in November. Baylor starts this drive with a run and a pickup of one to the 34. Joey, our fourth stack comparison. Well, you know what? Rushing yards for Texas, I expect them to be higher than passing right now. But Baylor hit a few big passes. They're able to throw the football here in this cold weather. Seastrunk to the 38-yard line. I mean, that, that, that passing yard stat right there has really been uh, established by the space they've able to, they were able to create for Antoine Gridley early in this ballgame. Texas, though, has started to lock him down a little bit more here in the second quarter. Petty on a rollout, wants to run, does, and he takes a shot at the 42. You can hear the pads pop. Adrian Phillips, the strong safety with the hit. Let's check in with Ryan. Joey Craig, we know that both of these offenses can put up big-time numbers, especially Baylor. But one of the things they have to do is to find a way to establish a run. they got to be more physical. they got to get this run game going. That opens up the pass game. Here comes a pitch around. Coleman breaks a tackle, 45-40. It takes the Longhorns with him out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Antoine Goodley, a nice seal block to help him on the outside and a pickup of 22. Well, I think Baylor would consider that a run play right there, even though it goes in the stat book as a pass. But Ryan had a great point. You have to have balance if you're Baylor on offense. Petty, quick throw, high catch taken by Goodley. He'll dance down the sideline, lost the ball, and it comes out and taken back by Baylor at the 23. How about Jordan Niver? Tight end right on top of the ball. Well, great awareness by Niver there, but Goodley has to do more to protect that football. He's going to get the ball in his hands a lot. Baylor needs to get it to him. Bryce Paler need, excuse me, Petty needs to look for him. Baylor hurries up. A tackle pass to 19. Seastrunk was picked up and dropped at the 19-yard line and a pickup of four. 
Yeah. Boy, what a perfect tackle there by Carrington Bindham. Coaches teach your kids, put your face mask right on that football, and he just knocked it out. Give it to Devin Chafin. Chafin, the ball carrier. As Baylor mixes it up a bit in the backfield. Third down and four. Baylor, 48 yards on the ground. Texas is countered with 59. Petty, play action up top. Incomplete. Back into the end zone. Petty wants six. So did Norwood. Wow. And what a catch. What a catch here by Levi Norwood. Does he get a foot down? No. From that replay, it does not look like he did, but what an incredible job going up and keeping the focus to maintain possession of the football. Joey, his, Ooh, his momentum I don't know, carried Craig. him. That's a, look, I don't know. Obviously a review. It's got to be reviewed. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? It didn't look like he got a foot in when he was going by, but he may have fallen and gotten the backside of his shoulder in bounds there at the back of the end zone. So he caught that ball with about three or four yards to spare, but he was carried out of the end zone. Well, Baylor needs to be careful here, Craig. The clock is running down that they don't get a penalty. Timeout. Baylor, first charge of the first half. 30-second timeout. Well, is it a catch? Well, let's take a look here. He has possession of the football. Does the backside of his shoulder get in? before anything else hits on that white bite beyond the beyond the end line. You well, can't if, see if anything else hits. Right foot, does it get down? Ew, it looks like it may scrape the ground from that angle. It kicked up some white chalk as well. This may be the better angle to see it. Watch his right foot. Does it hit the ground before his shoulder does? There, yes. Great call by the officials. His right foot hits out of bound before his shoulder fell in. Such a, such a tough call to make right there so on the close, spot. So close, so close. Big call here in this first half. Norwood carried out of bounds, so now we're going to have Jones in for a field goal attempt of 35. And the kick is up. No good. So no good from 35. Points tough to come by here in Waco. It hardly seems fair. He has the Intel powered two in one. A laptop and. Texas back with the football. Handoff Brown. The lose a yard back at the 19 yard line. Blackie in on that stop as well. You'll hear his name quite often today. This is the battle for the Big 12. If you just joined us, Oklahoma pulled the upset, knocking off Oklahoma State in Stillwater, Joey, 33-24. And now Baylor and Texas with a chance just to walk right in and take it away. McCoy on play action. Throws near side, and the ball's incomplete. Marcus Johnson, time for a Lowe's Never Stop improving game break. Let's check in now with Greg Wolf. Greg, thank you. Let's check in on the SEC championship from the Georgia Dome. Nick Marshall on the run, and he's going to throw it 38 yards. Find his favorite target, Sammy Coach, for the touchdown. Auburn, the 7-3 lead here in the first. Greg, back to you. Greg, thanks so much. Of course, the college football world, world still buzzing after last week's Auburn victory over Alabama. I've never seen a game like that. Unbelievable. Ever. So much action in one second of football. One second of football. Ball was in and out. Dimitri Goodson. Maybe too wide open. And again, it tells you how that ball is floating heavy. It hit his pads. You could hear the thud, and it comes out. 
incomplete. Well, look, it's tough to throw the football in these type of conditions. Ryan mentioned it earlier. The ball just becomes a brick. It's tough to get a grip on it. It's tough to be accurate. Your muscles tighten up. Heck, you know, it's even tough to talk. I mean, when you saw yeah. Ryan down there, sorry about it down there, buddy. It's, it's kind of cold, let alone trying to throw a football. Well, the wind chill in the low teens here in Central Texas. That's another tough punt off the side of the foot. It's picked up by Norwood. And he's knocked down at the 41-yard line. That was a 43-yard punt. Moment ago, right on the hands, right on the numbers. But the ball comes down on a cold day. It's windy. It's icy. Texas and Baylor going after the Big 12 title here on Fox. I want to show you something. This Rembrandt here. Yeah, he's good, yeah. So it was because... They didn't see things the same way. Ryan, is there anything else that could be contributing to the, the struggles for, for Texas through the air right now? Well, we know it's the weather, Joey, and that's definitely playing a factor, but I also think that Baylor's doing a great job getting pressure and putting Case McCoy under duress. We talked about Bryce Petty. The ball comes out of his hands pretty quickly. They're able to move the ball through the passing game through quick passing, but it's when these quarterbacks have to drop back, sit in the pocket, both are under duress, both are feeling a lot of pressure. Joey, you understand as a quarterback how difficult that is to throw dimes down the field. Petty's numbers 10 of 17, 125 yards. Also three carries, Joey, oh, yeah. for 11. They had some great rhythm on that first couple of series. On the ground they go. Nice cut back. Seastrunk. First down, move the chains up to the 43 yard line. Seastrunk looks really healthy coming off that groin. They didn't know just how healthy he would be, according to our Bryles. Nice cut on a cold day. First and 10, Baylor. That ball's out. Texas on top of it. Santos, the middle linebacker, picked it up. And again, that, that dropped like a bag of sugar, like cement. It is cold. Can't overplay. Overstate that statement enough here. Wow, and what a break for Baylor right here. All Dalton Santos has to do is just scoop it. Fall on the football. Just get it back for your offense. Instead, Baylor gets the ball back, and you hit it right on the head. It is, it's cold. It is freezing. We cannot overemphasize that. Your body does not work like it does when it's 70 degrees out, when it's 24 degrees. It is cold, and it's tough to get your body to do the same things that it's done all year long. On a 90-degree day in September, Santos picks that ball up. Joey maybe goes for six. Instead, he can't find the handle, and Fuller recovers. So they spot the ball down at the recovery point at the 45. And what they're saying there, Craig, is that Texas never had possession of the ball, therefore it's second down for Baylor as opposed to giving them a new set of downs. If you wanted to know by way of a reviewable play, Mike Pereira from our Los Angeles studio says that is not a reviewable play. And Petty overthrows that ball to Linwood. Prior to the ball being snapped, we've been paged by the replay. Now the official is going to state that they've been paged, Joey, by the replay booth. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure what they're looking at here. Frankly, I trust our Mike Pereira. Well, I do too. And I was surprised they, they get a page from upstairs. So there, ball's out on the ground. Santos, does he have possession of the football? I don't believe he ever no, did. It did. No, it did no. not look like he ever locked that football away. So Jim Blackwood, our replay official. You know, Craig, this could end up being a big break for Baylor because they threw an incomplete pass there on second down. They're going to get a, They're just going to get to do it again. Here's Scott Novak. After review, ruling on the field is confirmed. There was no possession by the defense. Second down. We will adjust the stakes 
The front stake is at the 43, and the line to gain will be the 33 yard. Joy's even a challenge for the officials today in this weather. Ball's coming out, big plays here and there. Cold weather does some crazy it things. It does. Makes that ball bounce. So it's second down. Lock will wind on my signal. Well, there it was. Second down again. Bryce Petty, who threw that incomplete pass on the swing out to the sideline there, gets to do it all over again. Second down, 22 for Petty and Baylor. Protecting a 3-0 lead off the foot of Aaron Jones early in the first quarter of 22 yards. That's it. Petty in the pocket, looks right, looks left. Finds a man, Norwood, slanting at the 46-yard line. Bindham made the tackle for Texas. Well, Levi Norwood has done a great job of filling in for the injured Tevin Reese. In the three games since Reese went down, he has 20 catches for 322 yards and four touchdowns. Has now caught a pass in 26 straight games. Kind of the overlooked member of that receiving core. Petty pumps, throws right in the belly, but it's dropped incomplete to Jay Lee. I, li I like that coverage there. Great coverage by Carrington Bindham. But you know what? They ran that trip stack again on the top of the screen, trying to draw the attention to the top, and instead they went down to the bottom to Jay Lee. Here it is. The trips to the stack on the top, and you see what it does. Antoine Goodley you see running clean down the middle, but it gives him space to run. That is the key for Baylor. Get Antoine Goodley in space and get him the football. Joey, you saw that replay. I think you'll agree that was good coverage by the secondary of Texas. It was a great play by Carrington Bindham. It yeah. really was. So now the punt pressure kicks away into the wind, and it dies in a hurry, and it takes a left turn out of bounds. This is the Big 12 title game, Waco, Texas. 3-0 Baylor on Fox. Three. Yeah, brr. Yeah, hey, Bevo. <laughs> Welcome to our meat locker. That's classic. Oh, my. You know that some old line guys refuse to wear the, the sleeves. Oh, it's a point of pride. The big men in the trenches can't wear sleeves. Texas to the ground. Malcolm Brown. He'll push his way to the 33-yard line. A pickup of five. Art Bryles, new contract extension of 10 years. Going for a school record 11th win and a Big 12 title. We only twice in their history have they won 10 football games here at Baylor, 1980 and 2011. Just speaks to the success that Coach Bryles has had in such a short amount of time. High snap. Off the left side, pushing, pushing, straight ahead. Malcolm Brown showing some emotion. Time for a game break to Los Angeles. Here's Greg Wolf. Craig, thank you very much. Well, after a Missouri touchdown to take the lead, Auburn answers. Five plays, 75 yards. Nick Marshall from 10 yards out, and Auburn back on top, 14-10. The ensuing kickoff, onside kick, and they recover. We've got a wild one at the Georgia Dome. All right, Greg, thank you. It's warm inside the Dome. Come on. <laughs> Feels like 14 degrees here in Waco with a stiff wind blowing from left to right. Jackson Shipley with the reception. This is the, the up top camera looking down at the field. I mean, it's just a slight miss, Joey, just kind of hanging around. Guarantee of the windshields, you're not going to have much fun chipping that ice away after the end of this one. Yeah, it's not so much the heat today as it is the humidity. Art Bryles told us on game one it was 118 degrees heat index. Opening week, here it is three and a half months later, and it's 14 degrees. 100 degree difference. Big run. Malcolm Brown. He's been going left side behind Espinoza and Hopkins. Well, Craig, this offensive line, we mentioned it earlier in the first quarter, starting to open up some big holes. Espinoza, Mason Walters, the most experienced part of this Texas team. They're going to need to rely on them heavily in this football game because Malcolm Brown is going to set the tone for this Texas offense. McCoy, quick slant. 
Read well by Baylor. Slipped the tackle. Mike Davis to the 38-yard line. You know, we talked to Major Applewhite, the offensive coordinator. We talked about how about that front line? Who's your tough guy? He said, no, no question, it's the big Yeti. Yeah, I was going to say, what Mason, do they call him? A woolly man with their side? <laughs> Yeti. Mason That's Walters. <laughs> <laughs> Got an injured Baylor bear down. Byron Bonds, true freshman, number 96. Played at Allen High School in Allen, Texas a year ago. What do you see? Well, there he is right there coming down low at the end of the at the end of the play. Good news is he is up and walking off under his own power. True freshman, Joey. How do you like to go six feet by two, 280? People don't realize how big these young men are. I mean, just, just massive. And, and when you're a small guy like me, sitting in that pocket surrounded you're by 300 pounds, out, oh, absolutely. You're happy to have a few big Yetis in front of you. <laughs> Malcolm Brown in the backfield with McCoy. Texas putting together a nice drive. Brown pops outside, spins out of a tackle near a first down, hit hard by Trey Trahan. Number 15 for Baylor. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and say that we are going to hear Malcolm Brown's name the majority of this game. As this game goes on, 27 carries last week has been over 25 carries every game that Jonathan Gray has been out. They've relied on him even when they had Joe Ber Bergeron healthy, and now that Joe is injured, went out earlier with that ankle. They bring the sticks out, and first down for Texas after the pickup of five. You know, I think Major Applewhite, the offensive coordinator, who was a quarterback here at Texas, Joey, I think he kind of now gets it that, you know what, the way this weather is going, let's just run the football. Well, and why not when you have the great running backs that they do here at Texas? Malcolm Brown and Joe Bergeron, both juniors, played as true freshmen and have really developed into fine running backs. First down, two wide receivers set up to the near side. McCoy takes a glance to the sideline. Apple White's in that warm booth today, making the calls downstairs. They just got a timeout called as the play clock was down to one. So Texas calls a timeout. We'll step aside. Under six minutes left. Baylor. ...by Baylor. A couple of turnovers by Texas. Some drop passes. It's going to come down to who can make plays in this cold. And, and like you said, for the Big 12 championship. McCoy goes under center on first and ten. They stretch it out. Bouncing off hard is Malcolm Brown and a gang tackle at the 30. H how strong a runner is Malcolm Brown? I know he just got driven back there, but boy, that contact, hitting the hole hard. We saw last week at TCU. I think that was as well as I've, excuse me, against Texas Tech. I, he's, he's just been fantastic running the football the last three weeks since Jonathan Gray has gone out. I would not be surprised if Malcolm Brown ended the day with 30-plus carries. They carried it for 27 last week, 128 yards against the Red Raiders. Second down, seven. Play action, McCoy wants the home run ball up top. Bump, batted away. What a play. Marcus Johnson out there, and Dimitri Goodson bumped and then put a hand in the belly and knocked it away well, incomplete. Just like he was playing defense back in the old WCC, a former point guard for Gonzaga in 2010 made a fantastic play on the ball and that was a nice great throw great read by Case McCoy but a better play by Demetri Goodson absolutely best throw of the day by McCoy in this cold weather now third down and seven there's over five minutes left here in the first half crowd comes alive McCoy no officials jump in 
and another timeout, timeout. as they milk the play clock to one again on this series. Timeout. So McCoy heads to the sideline. Mac Brown, 16th year. Well, Joey, tonight it's the Big Ten Championship. You'll see it right here on Fox. Huge BCS implications. Second ranked Ohio State looks to reach the national title game. Tenth ranked Michigan State looks for their first Rose Bowl berth in 26 years. And our coverage of the Big Ten title begins tonight at 7.30 Eastern right here on Fox. Well, Buckeyes or Spartans? Boy, offense versus defense yeah, today. Bottom line, that's that's exactly right. I'm curious to see. This is really the first team that Oklahoma, or excuse me, that Ohio State has played this year of any consequence. And if they really are the number two team in the country, we'll find out. You'll see it on Fox. This crowd is bubbling, is boiling. Craig again, play clock down to five. Case needs to be aware of that. Down to three, just got the snap away, draw play, up the gut, over street, to the 25-yard line. A pickup of five, over street, a redshirt freshman out of Tatum, Texas. That was his 19th carry of the year, now over 100 yards on the season. And it's going to bring up fourth down, short of the first, by two yards. Well, we've seen the struggles for Baylor with field goals today. Let's see if Texas can come through with one. Remember, this hard ball is tough to kick. Anthony Farah will try this from 42 yards off the far hash. Line drive kick. And good from 42. Had the wind behind him. 431 left in this opening half. And the field goals, the story. Jones from 22, and Farah just booted one up and in, and we're tied at three. Four thirty-one left, first half. Craig, this wind is not just affecting the players, it's affecting the flag guy for Texas. Just about got knocked over when he came out after the field, and the, field goal, and then he got blown into the goalposts. Look, if you're 20 years old and a college student, you don't feel the cold. <laughs> but you do feel if the If you're wind. carrying a 40-foot flag, you Look do. At that. Yeah, they're enjoying the final day of a great stadium, Floyd Casey Stadium, 64th year. Right here. Right here, Craig. Watch him coming down. He's already been blown sideways. Now he gets blown into the goalposts. What a rough day. <laughs> what a rough day. Ryan, you all right down there? Is he running into you? Joey's not running into me, but I'll tell you what, it is cold, it is windy, and I'm surprised he didn't go down a little bit harder down there. He did a good job staying up. He might be an athlete. Three all tie, kicks away. Line drive, one yard line. Goodly to the 27. Let's go out to Patrick O'Neill in Los Angeles. Guys, it was truly bedlam today in Stillwater, opening the door for Texas or Baylor. Plus, we go live to Indianapolis where the Buckeyes and Spartans are getting ready for the Big Ten Championship. That's coming up on the Pizza Hut Halftime Show. Yeah, indeed, bedlam in the Big 12. We'll decide the Big Ten champion tonight here on Fox. That game is always crazy. I remember my senior year, Oklahoma State beat Oklahoma to help us move our way back into the BCS picture. Now let's see what Petty and the Baylor Bears have to offer. They run to Glasgow Martin on a first down carry. He'll pick up two. Philip Montgomery, the offensive coordinator for Baylor. And Joey, I'm guessing both Applewhite and Montgomery, the safe bet is right now just run the ball. D-line against O-line. Martin, the second carry, picks up another two. Third well, down. Yeah, th this game is going to be one in the trenches, and Coach Mac Brown knows that as well. How about this? It's just a field goal. But Coach Mac Brown knows the points are coming at a premium today. Petty throws, play action. That ball in and out of the hands again. Corey Coleman. Joey, if you're a quarterback, 
I mean, you've you got to start to sense a little bit of hesitation if he would want to pull the trigger and throw that thing. Well, yeah, Bryce Petty over the last few weeks has, has been knocked out of rhythm. You know, the, the, the opening of the ball game against o Oklahoma State had that stumble into the end zone, led to a fumble, and then Oklahoma State really controlled things from there on in the first half. Last week against TCU, the coverage really kind of threw Bryce Petty off his game as well as Jason Verrett's coverage on Antoine Goodley. He needs to find himself in a rhythm to get this Baylor offense going. Spencer Roth into the win. Nice punt. Back to the 28 and a fair catch by Shipley. That was a boot of 39 yards. Well, McCoy today, 4 of 15. 34 yards and interception. Brown has carried the rock 14 times, nearly 100 yards, and Davis with a catch. I don't know if Major Applewhite's going to go off this, this game plan much right now. Well, yeah, I don't know that you need to with the effectiveness you're having running the football. You're, you're not going to rely on Case McCoy to throw the ball all over the place. Today. It's going to be Malcolm Brown. It's going to be a steady dose of running backs, and you need Co excuse me, Case to make good decisions when the time arises. Brown gets the carry off the left side, has room, big hole, and a gain of 15 yards. Orion Stewart made the tackle. And there's Major Applewhite. Four bowl games he led Texas to. And a record as a starter, Joey. You can put this in perspective. How about 22 and 8? Just a fantastic quarterback when he played here at Texas. 1999 Offensive Player of the Year in the Big 12. I mean, he really is. It, Case McCoy is, is a younger version of Major, Major Applewhite. Just steady, smart, accurate. About Brown, just went over, well now, over 100, 110 in fact, seven plus yards per carry. Well, they're on pace to do what Major told us. They want to run the ball 40 plus times. Texas averages over 200 yards a game on the ground. Both these teams, high scoring teams, but I don't think that's going to be the case today. Play action, McCoy, pressure from the edge, gets rid, rid of it, throws it, and it's caught by Brown. He's been the go-to guy. Trahan, the weak side linebacker with a tackle. You know, I, I like that decision there by Case McCoy, bringing the ball down to his running back because it creates a third and short situation. You know, Coach Mac Brown told Case, you don't have to go out and try and win the game for us. Just manage it. I don't like that, the game manager stigma, but Case has done a great job. It, it, what it means is make good decisions. Put your teammates in a position to be successful, and that's what he did on that last play. Even though it was only a gain of three, it sets you up for third and three, which is where Texas can really open the playbook and just run the football. Another timeout called as a play clock, again, down to one. So that's the final timeout at the two-minute mark here in the first half for Texas. Next year, we'll, we'll have a chance to look at that new uh, new Baylor Stadium. That Baylor Stadium is unbelievable, but I think they should put a retractable roof on it <laughs> for a day like this because, guys, I'm telling you, these, both of these teams right now are affected by these temperatures, and not only are the teams, I am as well. Listen now, we're up here in the booth. It's still a little chilly up here, Joey. It's, it's right? you know, a little nippy. But this is old-time football right here in Central Texas. Third down and three. Longhorns. McCoy, quick throw. The slant caught by Shipley. And a first down for Texas. Great decision there by Case McCoy. He recognized what, what Baylor loves to do. They're an aggressive defense. They like to do what's called cover zero. They brought all their linebackers and relied on their safeties to come up and make the play. Case McCoy saw it, saw the slant. Great delivery of the football. Four wide receivers. Instead, they go to the ground. Banging forward is Malcolm Brown to the 39. Knocked down by Lackey. Hey, Craig, let's go back here. Look, all three linebackers right here in the middle of the field are going to be coming on a blitz. And they're relying on their safeties to come up and cover the inside slot guys. Case sees that, throws the ball hot, and puts the ball right in the chest of his receiver. Great read and recognition by Case McCoy. McCoy making his 15th career start today. A little pitch out to Johnson. Read perfectly by Baylor. That's the second time they've gone with that a little dump off to DeJay Johnson and Baylor. Terrific job defensively in a four-yard loss. What do they say? Fool me once, shame on, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. They got him the first time. 
for a big play, Dajay Johnson did, but that time Sam Hall stepping in and getting inside the block didn't allow himself to get kicked inside. Great play by ba Baylor defense. They're down in three. Baylor showing blitz. Now they back off. Under a minute to play in the first half. McCoy wants points. He goes up top. That ball is up and up the hands. Incomplete. Marcus Johnson. And how about the coverage by the safety, Terrell Burt? And a fantastic play by the safety there. Not normally in one-on-one -on -one coverage, but he did a fantastic job of knocking away a great throw by Case McCoy. Terrell Burt last week. Boy, how about a day for, for him? Seven tackles, an interception return for a touchdown of 63 yards was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. Ironically, had the exact same stat line in Week 4. High hanger into the end zone. A 43-yard punt. And Baylor will have it for the final 28 seconds of the half. The UFC returns to Fox beginning Friday with weigh-ins on Fox Sports 1. Then next Saturday, it's Fox UFC Saturday, starting with prelims on Fox Sports 1. Then about for the World Flyweight Championship live on Fox between Demetrius Johnson and Joseph Benavides. Uh, Fox Sports is your home for UFC action. Now, Baylor today, Petty, 133 yards, started hot, kind of cooled a bit. Seastrong, 30 yards on seven touches. Goodly, five receptions for 65. Well, a lot of those, a lot of those catches came early, like you said, Craig. They got Antoine Goodley the ball early and often, and they were rolling. They had some momentum. His, his ability to create on the outside allowed Lake Seastrong to hit some holes inside, but they didn't capitalize. They've missed two field goals. They came up a little bit short in the red zone twice. They need to finish drives. Glasgow Martin, heart and soul of the Texas front. Two, maybe three yards up to the 23-yard line. This is the battle for the Big 12 title. Oklahoma with the upset against Oklahoma State. Outside the catch, Norwood steps out of bounds. Six seconds on the clock. And Brown's got to be happy with the position he is in. Joey here as we head into halftime. Petty, quick throw, knocked down hard from behind, incomplete. Goodley, the intended receiver. Nice hit by Duke Thomas. You know, as we head into halftime here, Craig, Baylor needs to go back to what they started with. Get the ball into Antoine Goodley's hands quickly. Let him establish some rhythm. Create some second and shorts, third and shorts, where Glasgow and Lake Seastrunk can run the ball effectively. Three wide receivers near his side. They throw it out to Coleman. He's got blockers. Follows them to the 40, and that's going to wind out the first half. Quandre Diggs made the tackle. And Joey on a cold afternoon in Waco, two field goals. Baylor went up early. Aaron Jones, 22 yards. Farah kicked one for Texas. And after two quarters, it's tied at three. So much on the line today. Well, yeah, and it's really been the mistakes of both, of both teams that have been the story of today. Let's go downstairs. Here's Ryan Neese. Coach. Obviously, that your offense has been held at three points. How much is, is weather a factor, and what adjustments do you need to make in the second half? I think, you know, I think we just got to be cleaner. You know, penalties and just not finishing drives, missing two field goals. You know, it's a good, tough ball game for a Big 12 championship. We got to play better. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Back up to you guys. All right, thank you, Ryan. Halftime here in Waco, Texas. 3-3 our score. Baylor and the Texas 169 yards through the air. It really doesn't seem like. Baylor has that many yards passing right now. It's, it's kind of been a quiet 169, but for Baylor to get back on track and establish the rhythm and the explosiveness that they've had all year, they must get that going early. They got to get the ball into Antoine Goodley's hands, allow him to be the big play guy he's been for him all season long. Well, trying to stay warm on a cool day. It's getting colder. That's the forecast, by the way. 25 degrees, it feels like it's 12. Wind gusty. And yeah, the forecast is getting colder. You can feel it by the minute. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. 
into the wind. Chip shot. Baylor runs up on it at the 24-yard line. So here we go as we start the third quarter. 3-3 tie. Let's talk Baylor's offense because, Joey, we've seen Art Browse and his O all year long. They go for over 630 yards a game. They go for over 55 yards scoring per game. Today, not the case. Well, yeah, they need tempo. They're a rhythm offense. They're that type of team that just feeds off of their own, their own success, and they haven't been able to establish that today. They started the game early, Craig, getting the ball into the hands of Antoine Goodley, and I feel like a broken record here, but when Tevin Reese went down, Te uh, Antoine became the guy, the catalyst for this offense. They need these explosive plays to open everything up, everything else up in the backfield. Big hole on the first play to the 30-yard line. A nice run of seven yards for Glasgow Martin. Let's check in with Ryan Neese, who had a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one with Mac Brown. Ryan? Craig and Joy, I did talk with Mac Brown. I did talk with Art Bryles, too, and both said weather wasn't a factor. I don't know about that because it's pretty cold out here. But the one thing that Mac Brown did say is they are going against the win in the third quarter. He's going to be important for them to control the ball, not make mistakes. And in the fourth quarter, when they get the opportunity to go with the wind, use that to their advantage, take their shots, and have an opportunity to finish, finish, finish the game and win the Big 12 championship. I don't think any coach is going to admit anything in a game like this. No, Cole, no way. Third down and three. Straight ahead running. 35-yard line goes Glasgow Martin. And a big first down to give Baylor some room, a pickup of four. You don't remember, Joey, that first series we saw Baylor to start this game, they had that rhythm you spoke of. Well, yeah, they did. This Baylor offense really needs to get that reestablished here in the second half to have the type of success they want to. In the hands of Norwood and out. We have seen multiple drop balls today. Well, yeah, we've talked about it all throughout the first half. When it's cold, the ball gets hard. And when that ball is flying at you, it's like a brick. The wide receivers need to really focus in. You, you, can't, you can't do the quick moves you do when it's warm out. You gotta secure the ball and just take what you can get. Ball comes out. Right there, exactly. Ball secure the football. Out. And it's covered up by Baylor at the 33-yard line. Dalton Santos in on the stop on Glasgow Martin. And a loss of one on the play. That brings up third down and long. Called it 11. Shock Linwood, number 32, checks in. Texas shows blitz. They back off. Play clock to three. Play clock to two. Petty. Right on the hands of Goodley, streaking across the middle. Big pass play and a first down at the 45. A fantastic play design there by Art Bryles, motioning, motioning the running back out of the backfield to create a matchup for Antoine Goodley in the slot, and Bryce Petty delivered the ball. That was a pickup of 21. Norwood breaks one tackle, can't escape the other, and a big pickup. Nice Nine yards to the 36-yard line. Well, here we're talking about right there. By moving the running back out of the backfield, it, vacates the linebacker from the middle of the formation, allowing Antoine Goodley simply to get into the middle of the defense, and Bryce Petty delivered a strike. Baylor works off the far hash. Keeper, Petty, he can run when needed. And I think he surprised Texas there as he took the ball back, the ball back out of the belly and ran it to the 27-yard line. Well, here we go. Here's that Baylor tempo we've seen all year long. Get a little rhythm going, now you can move. Petty wants to throw pressure from the edge, and down he goes, Jeff Coat. Did I say here we go with the tempo? That's, Jeff, that's Jeff exactly Coat, how Jeff you Coat stop it. Jeffcoat took the tempo away. Well, right here, you'll see Jackson Jeffco on the defensive end here just simply get through. Great move to get on the inside. Bryce Petty stood no chance right there. 11th sack of the season for Jeffcoat. He had six tackles in the first half. A loss of seven. Second down, 17. Up the middle goes Shock Linwood. It's about eight yards back. Well, yeah, they were just a moment away, just a, a shoestring tackle away from breaking a big one there. Great tackle by the Texas defense. At the 28-yard line. Petty throws. Tough catch. Climbs a ladder up top. Goodly stacked up. One, two, three Longhorns. Knock him down at the eight-yard line. 16 yards on the play. And Michael Thompson, the free safety there. Well, watch, look at Antoine Goodley there, just showing the emotion. Going up and making a tough catch, 
He knows that he's the catalyst. He knows that he's the guy who has to get this offense going, and he just made a great play. Linwood, middle of the pile, knocked down by a host of Longhorns, a pickup of one. This is very much, Joey, again, like the first opening drive we saw of this game by Petty. Well, yeah, the difference is, well, or we'll see what the difference in that first half. They weren't able to capitalize. They weren't able to get the ball into the end zone, and they missed two field goals. Over the top. Oh, oh and off the hands of Niver. Oh, and Bryce Petty wants that one back. I've been there. I've been there. You just see him so wide open. You just get excited and just drop it off to him. Take a deep breath. Relax. Don't force it. Niver was untouched oh, as he went boy. up the middle of the field and parked himself in the end zone. You can almost punt the ball. I mean, you can just throw a lollipop out there. Oh, and Bryce Petty's going to want that one back. Third down and nine for Baylor. Three wide up top. Two wide down low. Empty backfield for Petty. Clay Fuller, the motion man. Petty looks right. One-handed catch. Oh, oh, my! Touchdown, Goodley. Wow. On a day where that football's like a rock, somehow Goodly soft hands that one in for a touchdown. Wow. What a throw and catch. And Antoine Goodley may have just provided the play that sparks this Baylor offense in the second half. What a great individual effort, beating the coverage and making a tough catch. Aaron Jones with the PAT. It was a goodly kind of drive. And what a great catch in the end zone to cap it off. Petty and company up by seven. Guys, we talked about the creative ways to get Antoine Goodley into space. Watch here. They're going to motion over to a quad set, which clears out the, the, the uh, slot player there. Antoine Goodley runs his slant right into the vacated area. Great play design, but an even greater catch by an individual effort by Antoine Goodley. What a catch. Petty on that drive, Joey, four of seven, 67 yards, and Baylor up by a count of 10-3 at the six-yard line. Duke Thomas flags her out. Thomas returns the ball near the 35-yard line, but we have a flag down. During the return, holding, receiving team number nine. 10-yard penalty. First down. That wipes away a nice return. That scoring drive, how about 14 plays, Joey? 77 yards, the circus catch by Goodley. On that drive, three grabs, 48 yards. Well, his, like I said at the halftime, he needed to be the catalyst. And those catches he had earlier in the drive allowed other players to make big plays, and then he finished it off for the touchdown. All right, now the question, how does Mac Brown in Texas respond? I'm going to guess on the ground. Malcolm Brown carried the rock. In the first half, he opens up here on the third. He takes a lick at the 18-yard line. That's a run of seven, and he lost his shoe. Well, Craig, the key for Texas is just to stick with what you're doing. Don't allow the crowd coming into it. Don't allow the momentum of Baylor to take you out of what you've been doing so well in the first half, and that's running the football. Jalen Overstreet replaces Brown in the backfield. Overstreet cuts back near side. Flags out. And that looks like a holding call back inside the 20. Holding. Offense. Number 51. 10-yard penalty. Second down. That's Donald Hawkins, Joey, the left tackle. Yeah, right here. He's just going to get a fistful of jersey. As Br Brody Trahan tries to get away. That was an easy one for, for the officials to see there. Well, right now, the Big 12 advantage for the title, the trophy, and a trip to the BCS. 
So a bowl game belongs to Baylor up by seven as we battle here in Waco. OU set up the stage with an upset win against Oklahoma State earlier today in Stillwater over Street. Again, the ball carrier in Baylor's defense now is, is running on high speed. Well, Baylor's defense feeds off of their offense. Look, there are some teams that are going to man up and be stout in the middle and push you around on the, on the offensive line. That's not Baylor's defense. This defense feeds on playing with a lead, playing aggressive, creating turnovers, taking chances. They feed on the momentum of the offense in this crowd, and they're starting to pick things up. McCoy. Out of the pocket, needs 17, and hook slides at the 14-yard line. That is to play another down. You save yourself to play another day. A pickup of three, and a punting situation for Texas. Well, look who's back on the field right there. Ahmad Dixon had to sit out the first half for Baylor after a targeting foul at the end of last game. A senior leader for this defense, a fantastic safety. He's back on the field now after serving a suspension. Short kick, fair catch at the 47, Levi Norwood. So good field positions for Baylor. They're up by a touchdown, the punt of 35, and the battle for the Big 12 continues on Fox. To open the second half, they've come out in motion to create holes for him in the middle of the field. And all he's done is gone out and be the catalyst to spark this offense for Baylor. The crowd is in it, the Baylor sidelines are in it, Consequently, the Baylor defense feeds off it. This could be the start of the explosion that we've seen from Baylor so often this year. Goodly, eight catches, 114 yards, and a touchdown on the ground. One, two tackles broken by Seastrunk. And he rips off about seven. Peter Jenkins, a Sam strong side linebacker with the tackle. Remember, Texas Joey's playing without their fine top tackler, Steve Edmond, who's out with a lacerated liver. He came in, uh, he left the game with 73 tackles. He's missed today, and Seastrunk finding his rhythm, and he's out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Well, this is exactly what I'm talking about, Craig. Because Antoine Goodley was able to establish his presence on the last drive, it opens things up for everybody else. Texas's defense has to pay attention to Goodley. Now Seastrunk comes in and cuts off a couple big plays. Seastrunk. Well, he's, he, he dealt out the punishment wow. on, that, on that run to the 20-yard line. Michael Thompson was there, but it was Seastrunk who delivered the lick. Here he comes around the corner. Great block up front, and then Seastrunk just drops his shoulder to wow. run through Michael Thompson there in the secondary. Wow. Another first down, Baylor on the move. Up the cut. Glasgow Martin inside the 10. This is what we saw from Baylor all year. Big plays outside create big plays inside. Big plays inside then result in big plays outside. You have to pick your poison when B Baylor is running like this. And a gain of 10. First and goal. Petty squares his pads to the five. Don't forget, Petty's a big guy. 6'3", goes 230, picks up four. And it looks like maybe shaking on that play. Well, how about Stephen Huber getting in there? The center protecting his quarterback. And you're right, Qu Craig. Bryce Petty seems to be a little shaken up after that. Second down goal, Glasgow Martin. Stuffed and pushed back by Texas. Malcolm Brown, big number 90 with the hit. Well, Craig, when you run the ball so well with your running backs, oh, there it is, Malcolm Brown coming in. The key to the spread option or that spread attack is to keep a defense guessing. And if your quarterback doesn't carry the football every once in a while, just to keep him honest, the defense can key in on too many people. Right there, Bryce Petty does the right thing, but exposes himself to a big hit from Malcolm Brown. Yeah, he got hit thigh high. Touchdown, Norwood. Bang, bang play. Petty, Reddit, the hot slant. Norwood, six yards, touchdown, Baylor. You're just waiting for it. We're waiting for that explosion. And again, the motion, Craig. Watch him motion across the formation. He bumps out, creates a little space for Norwood there. That's all it is. It's a moment of indecision from a defense. Great play call, great design by Baylor, using the motion to start this second half. 
Point after attempt up and through the uprights by Aaron Jones. Baylor, two possessions here in the third. Two touchdowns. Norwood from Petty. 17-3, Baylor. Corey Coleman comes in motion across the formation. Look at the confusion it creates for the Texas defense. All you need is a moment of hesitation if you're running a quick slant from the inside. There it is. Freeze up Levi Norwood to sneak into the end zone. They did it to Antoine Goodley earlier to create holes on his slant. They did it to Levi Norwood. The motion, the play design, the play call for Baylor has created the offensive momentum. It's creating the spark that this entire stadium is now feeding off of. 30 touchdown throws now by Petty. And this kick lands eight yards deep in the end zone with just under seven minutes left. And oh, how the tide has turned. Some emotions out there at the field. We got a couple of flags down. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on number nine of the receiving team. Half the distance of the goal, first down. So the personal foul called against Texas. How about the Baylor offense today? The first nine drives, 43 yards. It produced 232 yards and just three points. Last two times out, 21 plays, 124 yards two touchdowns. Well, that's the difference, is the touchdowns. They converted those drives into seven points as opposed to settling for field goals in the first half, of which they missed two of them. Now, the emotion of the moment has put the ball back at the 13-yard line for Texas. They've allowed 14 unanswered. And look at this Baylor defense. Joey, you mentioned about the reacting to the offense in this crowd, and Ryan, you can hear the roar of the crowd down where you are. The crowd is on fire right now, and I just want to pay off what you were saying about motion, Joey. Greg Robinson, defensive coordinator, brought over the secondary and told the guys, you have to be able to communi communicate, you have to be able to pass that information from one, one another. It's the only way that you guys are going to be able to cover these guys as they motion out of the backfield. Handoff on a cutback. We'll look at the stack on Malcolm Brown fighting for every yard to the 15. Well, right here, Craig, this is a turning point of the ball game. This is where Case McCoy needs to take the, take the load, put the team on his shoulders, and deliver a first down. Because if they have to punt here, this crowd, like Ryan was talking about, is going to go absolutely nuts. Third down and eight. McCoy just seven of 19 for 38 yards. There's one pump underneath. Malcolm Brown, Trahan with the tackle. This defense, this offense of Baylor has been totally different, different since we saw the return of Ahmad Dixon. Well, the uh, return of Ahmad Dixon and and the explosion from the offense. I, I wasn't kidding when I said this defense feeds off the offense. When you play with a lead as a defender, you can be so much more aggressive. You don't worry about making a mistake because you know even if you do give up a big play, your offense is going to get one back for you. Farah will punt into the wind. Hangs it high. Fair catch, 46-yard line. And a boot of 35. Baylor making their move for the Big 12 title and a trip to a BCS bowl game. Up by four. What were you doing in 91? Let me think. I was 13. I was just discovering high school. <laughs> wow. A few years have passed, and there exactly. he is. Art Bryles with a new 10-year contract and a new stadium that opens next fall. Petty back to work. Pitch and catch. And a pickup of 11 yards. Corey Coleman on the receiving end of that petty pass who's really got the rhythm rolling here in the third. Yeah, we're going to see this Baylor offense tempo get moving now. Lake Seastrunk signaling to the sideline. We got to run. Play action, petty, one pump. That ball may have been deflected. It flew out of his hand. Boy, With Bryce an odd Pet rotation. Yeah. Bryce it? Petty took a shot there because he held onto the ball just a second too long. Antoine Goodley hadn't come out of his break yet. 
Bryce has to cut that ball loose and trust that he's going to come back on it. That ball Instead, flew he away. Held it, yeah, he held on to it and took a shot by Dalton Santos. Petty stands up, throws, coming back Ooh. on the hands is Coleman with a couple of nice catches here on this drive. Well, and there's an example of cutting the ball loose and trusting that your receiver is going to stop. He threw a back shoulder fade there. He had Coleman running up the sideline. Great coverage by the Texas secondary, but instead he stopped him on his back shoulder. Great throw and catch. Seastrunk swarmed under by Cedric Reed. It'll be interesting to see what the future holds for Bryce Petty. Joey's been talked about a lot in the press. Talked that he would come back for a senior year. If he does indeed, you would think he has to be one of the top Heisman candidates to start the season. Well, first of all, he needs to be in New York this year. He's had a fantastic season. And one loss, in my opinion, against a, a very good Oklahoma State team in Stillwater should not take him out of that room in New York. But you're right. If he comes back next year, he's definitely going to be on the short list as a, of Heisman favorites to start next season. 30 touchdowns to date. Rolling up nearly 400 yards, passing through the air. This time, Glasgow Martin knocked down at the 20-yard line. No gain, four down. Ryan Nees has a thought on Mr. Petty. Joey and Craig, we had a chance to sit down with Bryce Petty yesterday, and he just continues to show his maturity, his confidence. I just enjoy talking to the young guy. He has a, an, a, a certain presence about him, and you know what? He said it's all about his teammates. You know, he gave a lot of credit to his success, obviously to his offensive line and the playmakers he has around him, and he only, always understands the big picture, and that's what I respect about him. He never takes, he never gets too caught up in the moment. He always sees the big picture. Now, he is a spark of personality, to say the least. We've got a false start. Pat Colbert, the left tackle. And so that's going to move the ball back five yards for Aaron Jones. Well, I love what Bryce told us earlier in the year, is that I'm the operator. It's my job to operate this offense and get the ball to the right guys at the right time. And he's doing, doing that in the second half. This will be a 42-yard attempt, center of the field. Jones hit a 22-yarder in the first quarter. It looks long enough. Good. Baylor extends their lead to 20-3. To Down the middle. It's a long leading the, leading the country in scoring, leading the country in total offense. I mean, I, don't have the time to mention the number of records they could possibly break, but their ability to move the football on offense, invigorated their defense, has brought this crowd back into the ball game, and now Texas is in, a, is in a position where they have to hold on. They need to get a drive put together here and go back to what they did in the first half, which is moving the chains and pushing this Baylor defense around. Now this will be a big drive, a big series for McCoy and the Longhorn. Short kick, 11-yard line. Duke Thomas hits the edge. Watch out. 30, 35, takes a pop at the 35-yard line. 25-yard return. American Idol is looking for the next superstar. Join Jennifer Lopez, Keith Urban, Harry Connick Jr., and Ryan Seacrest as they search for the best new talent. American Idol's most exciting season yet. It begins Wednesday, January 15th on Fox. McCoy's got to make a statement right now. Under center. First down, 36-yard line. In round. Johnson has room, needs a blocker. Stutter steps and driven out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Dimitri Goodson drove him out after a pickup, Joey, at 21. Well, it was a really nice job by Sam Nall getting outside. Excuse me, Sam Hall getting outside to force the play back in. But there was nobody left to clean up. The offensive line for Texas got to the second level, blocked the linebackers, and sprung Johnson along the edge there. Coming up on two minutes left. Third quarter battling for yards is Malcolm Brown to the 41. That's a gain of two. Time for a Lowe's Never Stop Improving Game Break. Let's check in with Greg Wolf. Craig, thank you very much. Still to come later tonight, Braxton Miller leads that potent Ohio State offense in the Big Ten Championship game. 
Urban Meyer has the team likely 60 minutes away from a trip to the national championship game. First, they got to get by Mark D'Antonio in Michigan State. It all happens at 7.30 Eastern right here on Fox. Greg, thanks. It's a very intriguing matchup tonight. McCoy throws over the top. Marcus Johnson, the intended receiver. So the Buckeyes of Ohio State, number two in the country, 24-game win streak. That's the longest active in the FBS, and the Spartans is all about D. All about defense for the Spartans. Who wins out, defense or Urban Meyer's offense? <laughs> Are you asking me? I'm an offensive guy. Maybe Ryan may have a different answer for that one. Texas, one of 11 on third down conversions. McCoy, up top, got a man over the shoulder, catch dropped, incomplete. Nice pass off the hand of McCoy, but Sanders can't bring it down. Ryan, you going on the offense or defensive side? Craig, you're absolutely right. You know what? I got to go with Michigan State in that game. Their ability to play defense, their ability to shut down the run and play great coverage. They're only giving up 11 points a game. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with the way they're playing this year. So in a word, he says defense, Joy. No. The old Ray, linebacker. The best defense is a good offense. That's what I say. Texas will punt, trying to pin Baylor deep in their own territory. Fair catch, 13-yard line by Norwood. 30-yard punt by Farah. Well, if you're just tuning in tonight, well, welcome to Waco, Texas. 25 degrees. It feels like it's 12. Wind has been gusty off and on. And the forecast is colder. And you're saying ice and ice fog. fog. Ice fog. That's what's moving in is ice fog. I've never heard of ice fog before. I was asking if it was raining down on the field. The answer was no, it's just ice fog. Well, it's caused havoc in the central Texas airports, highways over the last two days. No problems for Baylor, however, here in the third quarter. 17 unanswered. They've scored on every drive thus far. And a gain of eight by Seastrom. And what a block there by Troy Baker, number 75, getting in and just pushing the Texas defensive players out of the way for Lake Seastrunk. Seastrunk came in averaging 109 yards a game. So when he's healthy, one of the better backs in the Big 12. Well, you, you have to acknowledge the fact that Baylor lost both Tevin Reese and Lake Seastrunk in that game against Oklahoma, and that affected them the next week against Oklahoma State. Reset the play clock. Now it's at 19. Petty hit from behind by his own player, and then Texas crushes him on third down and short. Jackson Jeffcoat with a big play and a loss of one. Well, look, when you run a spread offense, you always have the option to run the ball, or if the defense gets too many people in the box, to throw the ball. They tried to do that same thing from a tight formation, and Bryce Petty simply got run into the back. The running backs ran into the back of him before he tried to throw the ball. Well, it's fourth and two. Bryles calls for a timeout. I'm guessing the timeout comes because the wind behind the back of Spencer Roth will help that, this punt jump out and put uh, stick Texas deeper in their own territory. Well, that, that could be a great decision by Coach Bryles to call the timeout and preserve the wind. Uh, that's exactly what's happening here. Let's use it one more play. Absolutely great decision with the lead, with the momentum. Roth owns a big leg, averages over 46 yards a kick. Line drive. Shipley. Oh, boy. Off to the races. Has room 40. Has room 30. Down the sideline, bumped out hard, and a flag is dropped in at the 20-yard line. Oh, 
Well, Craig, one of the problems of, of kicking at low line drive is you don't get time to get your coverage down the field. Texas did a fantastic job of setting up a return wall, allowing Jackson Shipley to hit the edge. But it was partly because it was such a low kick. Here's Steve Nova, Scott Novak. There are two fouls, both against the kicking team. Holding, kicking team, number 65, penalties declined. Personal foul, face mask, number 55 of the kicking team. That will be added half the distance to the end of the run. First down. Much needed break for Texas. Big return by Shipley. A 43-yard return. 15 minutes away. Baylor so close to a Big 12 championship. Stay close on Fox. Well, you're probably wondering why there's no time on the clock and the teams didn't switch ends. When you accept a penalty at the end of a quarter, you must play one more play in that corner. It's an untimed down, down that Texas has here before they switch ends to end the third quarter. So McCoy at the 13-yard line will run it off the right side to Malcolm Brown, and Baylor's defense will throw him for a one-yard loss. That is the end of the third quarter. So now we're going to watch these two teams switch, switch ends. Yeah, you're usually in commercial when this happens, so... Uh... It's a lot of action going on. In the this field. is added bonus yeah, exactly. coverage. Yeah, and behind the, the 12, scenes, folks. Big 12 title game here in Waco, That's Texas. What we bring you on Fox behind the scenes. Well, there he is, Mac Brown, 16th year. Has success. He's had failures. And you know what, Joey? No one really knows except like Mac Brown. Mac Brown, what his future holds. A lot of stories. Yesterday, today, last week, week four about the future of Mac Brown? Well, there, there's one thing we do know. You know, we're not in a position to speculate. We, we don't know what's going on in the locker room. We don't know what's going on in the athletic director's office. But we do know he's been a fantastically successful coach at the University of Texas. Big 12 championships, a national championship. And I got to say, has done a fantastic job of coaching this team. One and two start. Nobody thought they'd be playing for the Big 12 championship here in December, but he's kept this team together. He's kept his coaching staff together. You got to give him credit for a class job this year. McCoy incomplete. Now you look at the camera. Don't try to get out the Windex and clean your television because that's the ice fog. That's the ice fog that you <laughs> weatherman. Uh, Meteorologist, please. It's ice fog that's come in and hit the lenses of these cameras, and you know what? You can't remove it. That's it, It's getting just colder by the moment. Colder by the moment. Ryan, how you doing down there, buddy? We got some hot coffee up here if you want it. I bet you're enjoying that hot coffee. I'm enjoying this <laughs> hot game right now. It is indeed. Texas, a much-needed score here. They need seven, not a field goal. Three wide receivers up top. McCoy, quick step, goes up top, and overthrows in the end zone kendall sanders the intended receiver one-on-one -on -one with kj morton it was a nice decision just a little bit high on the throw giving kendall sanders a chance he need or he needs to give him a little bit of a chance to make that catch in coverage but texas is running out of opportunities you know they established their will in the first half but allowed baylor to get going in that third quarter and build a a pretty, a pretty sizable lead. They're going to have to start making some plays through the air and convert these red zone opportunities into touchdowns if they're going to get back into this ball. Anthony Farah from 28 yards near hash. Flags are out before the kick. Well start. Offense. Number 51. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Some motion problems. Hawkins, left tackle. Baylor had some miscues, Joey, in the first half. Yeah, they did. Drop balls, turnovers. But they've rebounded from here in the third quarter while, while Texas is not. Now a 33-yard attempt by Farrell. And another flag is out as the officials signal it's good. Well, Craig, depending on what this penalty is, Texas is signaling it's against Baylor. I don't know if they accept it. I'm, you know, if it's a five-yard penalty, 
I don't think you take the points off the board, but if this is one that sets up a possible fourth and short or gives you an automatic first down, this could be very costly for Baylor. Now Mac Brown's come on the field. And he's made the choice. Personal foul. Oh boy. Unnecessary roughness on the defense number two, leaping foul. Texas has elected to take the three points off the board and enforce the foul half the distance of the goal. First down. Well, during a game this close, I think Mac Brown makes the right call. Yes? Yes or no? Absolutely, it's the right call. You need seven. You need seven points. Watch here. Right there. Right, right in the middle. You cannot leap on top. You can stand and jump, but you cannot leap on top of the pile. Now Texas with new life. Brown takes a hit at the six-yard line. That was Sean Oakman there, who made the big block of the field goal yes. in the first half. Well, this time he, he just gets too aggressive. And he went over the top of Kennedy Estelle, number 77. And the unsportsmanlike call at Texas now was second down. And goal to goal. Hand off right side. Boy, Malcolm Brown, Joey, is taking a beating. He's dishing it out as well. He took on three bears as he hit the edge at the four-yard line. And watch Lackey come over and just deliver the blow there down the sideline. Lost a mouthpiece along Boy. the way. I'll tell you, that's hard hitting, right? Coming right at you at your, down at your living room. Well, he's the type of guy you'd love to have on your defense. A small school player from Michigan. When he started his college career, excuse me, a small school in Michigan, his coach told him, hey, you're too good to play here. You got to go somewhere else. Great player, fantastic play. Crowds roaring on third down and goal. Texas stays on the ground with Brown. Pushes to the two-yard line. Lackey again and on that tackle. There you go, right in the air. He knocked his own mouthpiece out there. That's the kind of hits wow. in Waco today. 130 yards for Brown. Joey on 25 tough carries. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets another one here or if they run a play action off of it. The way that Malcolm Brown's been running the football, you know what, I bet you they play action this and try and drop one over the top to a tight end. Let's see what happens. McCoy sets it all in motion. There's a play action. McCoy. He may have to run it himself. He's in trouble. Switches back, goes the other way. Touchdown, Texas! That may, may be the toughest two-yard touchdown of the season. And boy, Case McCoy was excited, showing his old crazy leg self. Right before the play, Mac Brown trying to call timeout. Wait, wait, no, no, no. I, I mean, I was just kidding. I, I want this play. God, Case McCoy, it reminded me of Texas A&M two years ago, the last time that Texas played them to end the season, scrambling around, simply willing his team into the end zone. That's the Case McCoy that we've seen all year long. Well, you call him crazy legs for a reason. He bails Texas out of a, uh, a tough spot as he finds Malcolm Brown. This one's not over. 12.38 left. Baylor, 20, Texas 10. And he has. He's done that more. Oh, how about handling yourself in that yeah. situation? I mean, so many kids would have crumbled playing in the shadow of your brother, who is Colt McCoy, at his university. Give Case McCoy the credit he deserves for doing a great job for this Texas team leading them this season. Ten-point game. Levi Norwood cuts it at the 30 to the 35. And a return of 32 yards. And, Joey, you go back to that last touchdown. It was kept alive because of the unsportsmanlike penalty called on Open, who did the uh, the jump up and over. Illegal jumping. Illegal jumping. <laughs> That's what we'll call it. No, I mean, we saw Oakman earlier in the game block a field goal because he's six foot nine, but that time he just jumped too far into the line. You cannot come down on 
on the offensive lineman when you're trying to block a field goal and that could be a costly penalty because it's taken the air out of this crowd Bryce Petty needs to engineer a drive here to get this momentum back and not give it right back to Texas and off C strong big hole dances back 50 and chopped down at the 45 yard line all right, Ryan, how big is this drive for Texas and Baylor? This drive is huge for Baylor. It's their opportunity to obviously eat up the clock, and they got to do that by pounding the rock. We're going to see a steady dose of Seastrunk right now. Instead, it's Petty. Takes it back and carries it past the 40. He stays in bounds at the 38-yard line at Jackson Jeffcoat with a tackle. And by a steady dose of Seastrunk, I'm sure you meant Bryce Petty because he's the explosive ball carrier in that backfield, right, Ryan? <laughs> He is the explosive guy. You gotta, you gotta mix it up. Barely got that ball in the belly of Glasgow Martin, and he pushes the pile first down at the 33-yard line. Well, this is not what you wanted if you're the Texas defense. After engineering a great drive for a touchdown to get you back into this ball game, Texas defense is getting pushed around. Three plays. You're at the 33-yard line. Petty wants the home run ball, but it's going to fall incomplete. Norwood, the intended receiver, had one-on-one -on -one coverage with Quandre Diggs. Good cover corner. Well, we've seen this a couple times now, Craig. The receiver for Baylor and Bryce Petty not being on the same page. They had a read route going on the uh, in the slot there. As Norwood ran, he had the choice to cross the face of the safety or to keep it up the seam. Bryce Petty thought he was going to keep it up the seam. Norwood took the face of the safety. See strong. Well, just that one moment, that one millisecond, he stuttered, stepped, and he was dropped back for a loss of one at the 35 by Dalton Santos. Well, a big, it, much has been made about the reemergence of the Texas defense under Greg Robinson. One of the biggest things has been their third down conversion percentage. In the first six games, they were giving up, uh, opposing teams were converting 45% of third downs on them. That was 109th in the, all of FBS. In the last five games, only 29%. Ninth in the FPS. Third down 11. You know what Greg Robinson did when he came in? He just let his athletes play football. And that's what they're doing. Petty, shotgun, third and 11. Up top on the hands at the 10 yard line. Glasgow Martin. Again, Baylor motions out of the backfield to create matchups. Only this time, Texas doesn't get fooled. Look, Santos goes all the way out. They they bracket Goodley going up inside and out, and Glasgow Martin simply runs by the linebacker Dalton Santos. I guarantee you that was not Bryce Petty's first option. You don't want to throw a fade route to Glasgow Martin, but boy, what a throw and catch. Keeper, hook slide down at the 12. A loss of one on the on the play. Petty. Flirting with a 300-yard day. He's up near around 270. Well, you're going to see Petty go down here. He, remember, he took that big shot running down on the opposite goal line. And I'm sure he doesn't want to expose himself to another one of those. Or maybe he does. <laughs> Interesting call. And another yard loss or no gain is the call. There's our Bryles, 10 minutes away, less than 10 minutes away from a Big 12 championship. Well, this BCS is BCS bull bid. Well, yeah, it, and, and this is a huge down for Texas because if you can hold them to a field goal, right now it's a two-possession ball game. A field goal is still a two-possession ball game. You cannot afford to go down by 17 at this point. Clock runs, nine and a half left. Petty shotgun. Throws the end zone. No flag, incomplete. Duke Thomas on coverage in the corner, and it's going to be a field goal opportunity for Baylor. And this is the right call if you're Baylor, putting points on the board, forcing Texas to score two touchdowns to catch you, as opposed to just risking giving the ball back and still only keeping a 10-point lead where you could tie it up with a touchdown and a field goal. This, would make, right this, call. this yeah. would make the spread Joey 13, a 28-yard attempt. Aaron Jones already hitting from 22 and 42 yards. Kicks up. Baylor stretches her lead to 13. 9-18 left. 
Bryles and the Bears. Oh, so close. You couldn't ask for a better game, better way to end the season. One team, Baylor, explosive all year, but you, you expected them to be here. Texas started slow, one and two. What a story, just the fact that they are here. Short kick taken 30-yard line and cartwheel down at the 31. Got a flag down. It looks like it's in the vicinity of an offsides on the kick. Offside, number 19 of the kicking team. Five yards will be added to the dead ball spot. First down. Well, don't forget tonight, the Big Ten title game. You'll see it right here on Fox, BCS, Implications. Joy, I love this matchup. Number two, Ohio State. Number 10, Michigan State. That's coming up next here on Fox. Offense always wins. A good offense is the best defense. <laughs> That's what Ryan Neese always says. Is that what Ryan That's says? That's what Ryan says. That's what he said I'm today. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he says. Joey, that's just because you rub off on me. We hang out all the time now. <laughs> your, your, obviously, your offensive mind is now influencing me. But at the end of the day, speaking of offense, Texas has the opportunity now no. to put points on the board. They have the wind at their back. They have to try to score quickly here. And, Ryan, I like the decision by, by Texas here to force Baylor to re-kick. They ran a pooch kick to keep it out of the returner's hands. We saw the big punt return from Jackson Shipley a moment ago. They want to spring one big off a kick return. Another pooch kick. At the 31. Out to the 36-yard line. Well, Craig, after the big punt return by Jackson Shipley, which set up Texas's last touchdown, they want to keep the ball out of the hands of DeJay Johnson. Explosive kick returner back there. He can do it all. He's the type of player. He reminds me of DeAnthony Thomas over at Oregon. Not really a receiver, not really a running back, but so talented you have to get the ball in his hands. And he's a dangerous kick returner. Had one for a touchdown against Oklahoma midseason. Baylor just deciding to give Texas decent field position as opposed to risking the ball in his hands. Quick throw. Far side. Shipley. Maybe a yard to the 36. Now the clock works against you. Nine minutes left. Two possession game, 23-10. Four wide receiver split. McCoy far side. And it's on the hands of Davis and just a pick up of three. K.J. Morton with the tackle. I don't know if you can be this methodical. Don't you got to hit a big play here? Clock continues to roll. At some point here, they're going to need to get a big play, but you got to focus on just getting the first down. You know, we talked about it in the open. Don't try and force the situation. Simply move the chains. Allow your teammates to help you. Just get a first down and let the big play take care of itself, but you're going to need it soon. They're down in five from the 41. McCoy out of the pocket from behind at the 40. Jamal Palmer, the left end, number 92. Well, in decision time here for Mac Brown and the Texas Longhorns, I think you still punt this ball. There's too much time left. You have, you have three timeouts. There's too much time. But you're going to need a big defensive stop, and you're going to need a quick defensive stop. Also, you have the leg of Anthony Farah and the wind behind your back. He kicks it into Berend. Takes a big Texas bounce. Still bouncing inside that? the 10. If he did, it's going to be Longhorn ball. They are pointing Baylor's way at the three-yard line. What a punt by Farah. 57 yards. 7.21 left, Baylor by 13. So at that point, as you're trying to recover that ball, just fall on it. I know you want to fight. I know you're trying to get in the end zone, but those guys should have tried to fall on that ball, secure it, and get the ball back to their offense right there. 
7.21 left. Baylor with the ball, first and 10. A 13-point lead at their own three-yard line. To the ground goes Glasgow Martin. A pickup of three. Joey Bryce Petty, you have to appreciate his game today. 287 yards, a pair of touchdowns. He's been beat up a little bit. Well, he stood in there taking some shots, throwing the ball, taking some shots, running the football. But I admire Bryce Petty and what he's done this year. 30 touchdowns against only two interceptions is the highest touchdown to interception ratio in the BCS era. Right now, Kellen Moore is number one, 39 touchdowns and three interceptions. But if he finishes off the season like that, he'll be number one. Baylor ran the play clock down to three, second effort. The ball punched out by Martin to the 10-yard line and a pickup of four. And we look at our game summary. The winner clinches the Big 12 title and a BCS berth. The third quarter points, one-sided Baylor 17-0. Total yards today, Baylor really picking it up over 450 yards. And Petty, as we mentioned, 287 and a pair of touchdowns. Well, it was that third quarter that really sparked Baylor. In the first half, they got the, the ball to Antoine Goodley early, but they couldn't convert. They couldn't finish drives and ended up kicking field goals. In the third quarter, they punched it in for two touchdowns. Well, it's hard going down in the trenches. Glasgow, Martin to the 11, a pickup of one. Well, that's exactly what you needed if you're Texas. A quick defensive stop, and now Baylor's forced to punt the ball back to him. Into the wind. Exactly, into the wind, and to a, a kick returner in Jackson Shipley, who took one back the last time you did this. Spencer Roth, five yards deep in his own end zone. Line drive punt. Takes a hop at the 50. Could not hit the edge. Shipley thrown down at the 46-yard line. Texas trying to stay alive. They've got the emotion, but do they have time on the clock? Down 13 in 13 away from a Big 12 championship. I don't think he's what? feeling much of the cold world. right now. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a new jacket. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hot design out of Milan. Like it, yeah. Yeah. That's... Ryan, so, you, you gotta get yourself craze. one of those. Yeah, right, exactly. Ryan brought it to Baylor. Yeah, it's yeah. warmth. It's all about warmth. Now you've got Texas with five minutes left and down 13. McCoy shotgun. Quick throw far side. Out of bounds at the 49, Mike Davis and a pickup of five. Got to work the sidelines. You look at the timeouts, Texas with three, Baylor two remaining in this game. Well, yeah, there's a lot of time left in this ball game. You want to conserve as much clock as possible, but don't forget about your running backs in this situation. Here comes the pressure by, by Baylor. Yeah, they're creeping up. Here they come. Here they come. Yep. McCoy slingshots it to the sideline and nearly intercepted. Intercepted. Lackey came on the pressure, and McCoy had to sling it to the near side. See, Lackey, one of the most active backers we've seen. Five career interceptions. Came in with 84 tackles, four and a half sacks. Had a huge one last week against TCU, picking it off on a little slant over the middle, taking it back for a touchdown. All right, how about 54-yard run back? Great play, great play. They're third, gonna need that here right now. Third down five. McCoy tucks and runs. First down, slides down at the 41. Gutty call. Great call by Major Applewhite. Nobody expected Case McCoy to be running the quarterback draw there, expecting Baylor to drop into coverage. Follow your running back through the hole. Great play call by Major. Seven yard pickup, first down. 42 yard line of Baylor. Again, here comes heavy pressure up the middle. McCoy's got man coverage. Throws the ball up top. Incomplete down inside the 10-yard line. Mike Davis, the intended receiver. Great coverage by K.J. Morton. Let's get a game break. Back to warm Los Angeles and Greg Wolf. Thanks, Craig. Braxton Miller, will he be in New York this time next week? Coach Urban Meyer says he thinks his QB is Heisman worthy. 
Number two, Ohio State playing for a trip to the BCS title game against number 10 Michigan State. The Big Ten Championship, it's next right here on Fox. Thank you, Greg. Braxton Miller will get his time in the spotlight tonight. McCoy setting up a screen. Picked off! Morton can seal the deal. One man to beat. Touchdown, Baylor! Flag is on the field. Scott Novak. Before the touchdown was scored, unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense number six. Broker stride at the three-yard line. We will penalize 15 yards from the three-yard line. First down. The emotional Ahmad Dixon. Well, it shouldn't turn out to be classy, but here's what happened. Watch Mike Davis right here. They're trying to run a wide receiver screen, except he comes in to try and block. You see all the linemen running coming out. Excuse me, they're trying to run a running back screen. But Mike Davis just gets in the way, tries to drop it over the top, and it's intercepted. Just a broken play from the middle, from the beginning, excuse me, as Mike Davis tried to get in there and get a block. But the pressure by Baylor, they did it a couple times bringing one more guy than Texas could block. Forcing the case, case, McCall, the case McCoy to throw the ball first when down. he was uncomfortable. So first down inside the 20. Up the middle, untouched, touchdown Martin. 18 yards. And listen to this crowd, Craig. How fitting. Glasgow Martin, the senior, 15 touchdowns last year, had a knee injury to start the season, getting back to back to full, you know, full speed midway through the year, scoring a touchdown in the last game at Floyd Casey Stadium. I mean, th this is just fitting that a senior who's meant so much to this program should score a late touchdown to help take Baylor to a Big 12 championship. Took it in, untouched, down to Round Rock, Texas, and the PAT, the chip shot up and good. Martin with a 78-yard performance on 19 carries. Well, a moment ago, the ball picked off. The unsportsmanlike pimp produced a Heisman Trophy winner a couple of years ago, Robert Griffin III. And from that point on, this program just kind of skyrocketed upwards. Well, yeah, Robert Griffin III, Nick Florence last year. Bryce Petty this year. They've had just a fantastic group of quarterbacks come through here under Art Riles. No return back to the 30-yard line. McFarland, they've been punching that ball his way throughout the second half. Third time he's had a, a kick return. Well, if you're Texas now, the ball's got to be in the air. It has to be. It has to be in the air, but you got to do it smart. These are the situations where you end up forcing a ball because you have to make a play. But if you're Case McCoy, you, you got to force it in a smart way. I, I know it's, it sounds like an oxymoron, but you have to take care of the ball and give yourself a chance. McCoy, low snap. Sling shots it through the hands of Mike Davis, incomplete. 354 left. Well, you have to celebrate what Art Bryles, Joy, as we talked about, has accomplished during his tenure. The new contract is, is at hand, is in hand, I should say, 10 years. McCoy, incomplete.
And Bryles, in a game like this, of course, it's all about recruiting, Joey. This is the big state of Texas. It's Friday night lights. The high schoolers look to the programs that will help elevate their game to the next level. Well, yeah, and if you can win those in-state games, you impress those kids. You High school kids are impressionable, and they want to go. They want to stay close to home. They want to stay close to their, their mom's cooking in the, uh, the laundry facilities back <laughs> at home. And if you can prove that you can win conference games, you give them a reason to stick around. McCoy, third down. Middle of the field, it falls incomplete. Here's Ryan Neese. Joey and Craig, we sat down with Coach Browse yesterday. He said it was a privilege to be a part of something that you're building. They felt like he, he felt like they were building something special here. Obviously, with the way the season's going, now uh, the, the opportunity to move into a new stadium next and year. There's some the special formation. things going on here at Baylor Eli University. Return for Baylor. In his sixth season, you see his overall record of 43 and 31. Texas forced to punt. Beautiful kick, fair catch by Norwood back at the 24-yard line, a boot of 45 yards. Well, what do you know? That patch, that's a nice, that's a, you know, you look good. You look good in that coat from the Fiesta Bowl. Oh, a few years ago. We didn't get those coats when we won, though. We should go back and see if we can get a coat like that. I wear that around. But, but you know what? So deserving. So deserving is this Baylor program. If they do pull it out here in the final three and a half minutes, I could not think of a better team to represent the Big 12 Conference in the Fiesta Bowl. They've just been so much fun to watch all season long. Well, they're explosive. They're going to make it fun. No doubt, 55 points a game. They came alive in the third quarter after a 3-3 tie. They forgot about the weather as Martin breaks out of a tackle and picks up eight tough yards to the 32. So Bryles' brilliance, we talked about his overall wins, conference wins, bowl appearances, 14 have gone to the next level. Wow. Well, look at the conference wins. Since the start of the BCS in 96, in those first 11 years, only 11 conference wins, 24 in the last five years under Art Bryles, those are the type of wins that keep kids in state, that help you build a program, and take you to a Big 12 championship. Martin, the ball carrier, first down to the 34-yard line. And you have to wonder about Mac Brown. What will the next week how that will all work itself out in Austin. Well, it's been a story since the beginning of the season. It has. Since they started one and two. And I've said it a number of times. The coaching job that he has done since that point to get his team into a position to, to win, a, have a chance to win a Big 12 championship is, is incredible. Martin breaks it, hard running to the 47. Martin picks up 13. Clock runs up on two minutes left. I'll tell you, the players on the Baylor sideline, they're just uh, running around. I gotta, I'm looking for a, a Gatorade bucket. It, we, may have, it may have frozen. <laughs> yeah, you know who I was looking at? Big Cyril Richardson, number 68, just came out of the ball game. A finalist for the Outland Trophy, a mid-season All-American, the Big 12 Offensive Lineman of the Year last year. Anchors that O-line for Baylor. Boy, what a deserving player to get the ovation from his teammates. Lynn Wood on the outside edge to the 44-yard line. A run of nine yards. Well, the one disappointment that came against Oklahoma State, Joey. And it is so difficult to go undefeated. It is so tough. Even more so in this day and age. Oh, you my. beat up on one another in conferences from the SEC, the Big Ten, the Pac-12, the Big 12. I don't care what conference you're in. SEC, Big Ten, Big 12, Pac-12, it doesn't matter. Going undefeated 
is an accomplishment and is so difficult to do. One loss does not take away from the incredible season that the Baylor Bears have had this year. Well, the jumping has started. I don't know what to expect in this final game. A salute to the old man. Floyd Casey Stadium, 64 years. It's housed Baylor football, and it's going out in style. What a way to close it out. On a knee is Petty. That's it. Big 12 champions. The Baylor Bears, first ever Big 12 title in our Bryles with 11 wins, a school record here in Waco. What a fantastic job Coach Bryles and his coaching staff have done here in Waco to take a program that was really at the bottom of the Big 12 to turn them into conference champions. Let's go downstairs. Ryan Neese with the quarterback of Baylor, Bryce Petty. Thanks, Craig. Bryce, what an unbelievable victory on a cold night. Your team battles back. You guys heat up in the second half. What does this win mean for you guys winning the Big 12 championship outright? Man, I, I, I can't be more proud of this team. I told you before, I won't know what to say. I still don't know what to say. I'm so proud of this team and these guys. I said it since day one. This is a very special team because of a lot of different reasons. That defense played their butt off tonight. And I'm so proud of each and every one of these. This is, a, this is such a blessing to be a part of. Can you describe the emotion and the mindset of your team to be able to pull out this victory late in the second half now? I'm not real sure what you said, but if it had anything to do with emotion, I wanted to cry. I'm trying to hold back a lot of tears right now. I'm just so happy, man. I really am. And Coach Bryles, obviously, is the leader of your team. What does he mean, and how has his leadership carried over to you and the players? And Coach Bryles started it all. There was a vision in his office that he told me about five years ago, and this was it. I mean, he means everything to this program, and so we're so happy and excited that he's part of it for, for not only this year, but 10 more years. We love that guy. Congratulations. Enjoy thank the you. championship. God, appreciate you. Back up to you guys. All right, thank you, Ryan. A fine performance in the second half by Bryce Petty, and Baylor pulls away from Texas 30-10. to 10. Big 12 champions and Fiesta Bowl bound. Baylor 30, Texas 10. We'll come back to Waco with more.